Now, interesting question is how the standard errors obtained from li linear regression uh, compared to the standard errors calculation we did based on randomization, the like name and standard error. So let's first consider the case of homoscedasticity. So homoscedastic error, usually the assumption is written as the variance, covariance matrix of epsilon, here epsilon is a vector of um, n dimension, is independent of the treatment variable t, the predictor t. Okay? So the variance covariance matrix, which is n by n matrix here, can be written as sigma squared, which is scalar, um, times the identity matrix of n dimension. So every uh, error term, epsilon, uh, for each in epsilon i, has the same variance sigma squared, regardless of its treatment status. We can um, sort of dissect this assumption uh, into two components. The first component is the equal variance of the potential outcomes. So the variance of potential uh, error term doesn't depend on a treatment condition. So epsilon of zero and epsilon i one, which is the new error term we had uh, from the linear regression model, heterogeneous treatment effect linear regression model, the variance is the same. Okay, so the error term variance um, doesn't change regardless of the treatment condition. The another part of this assumption is is guaranteed by the random sampling of units which implies that the error terms are independent because each unit is a random sample from the population. And since it's um, a random sample from the same population, the variance, the marginal variance of these error terms are identical. So everybody has the same variance and each observation is independent of one another. So that's basically the homoscedasticity error assumption um, and how that relates to the assumptions about the design that we have. Under the homoscedasticity assumption, uh, model-based variances can be written as follows. And we can estimate that by estimating the numerator sigma squared, which is um, basically sum of square residuals, epsilon hat squared, and divided by n minus two, accounting for the degrees of freedom. Um, loss of degrees of freedom for two parameter alpha and beta. Okay. So interesting question is how this estimator of the variance of beta hat, this the estimate of average treatment effect um, relates to randomization variance we derived using the Neyman's method. So suppose um, that homoscedasticity assumption is violated. That is, the variance under the treatment condition, variance of error term under the treatment conditions, is different from the variance of error term under the control condition. Sigma 1 squared is not the same as sigma 0 squared. This is um, important because the homoscedasticity assumption is realistic if, say, um, under the constant additive treatment effect. So if, if the treatment effect in constant additive, sigma 1 squared and sigma 0 squared, it's going to be the same. The variance of the potential outcome under the treatment and control group is exactly the same because it's just shifting by a constant. But in other situations, this assumption is highly unrealistic. So we can think about what would be the bias in the estimated variance when the assumption actually doesn't hold. So how, do, how can we written, write the bias? So bias can be expressed as the expected value of the variance estimator um, based on the least squares, almost elasticity assumption, right? And we can, we can compute this expectation by taking um, the expectation with respect to t, because the t is the treatment variable that uh, is actually randomized. So it's the same as the Neyman's uh, framework where we can just think about what would happen if, um, if we randomize uh, over and over in the hypothetical scenario. And what would be the average variance estimator 
over repeated, uh, hypothetically repeated uh, randomized experiments. And then we can compute that analytically and then take a difference um, between that um, expectation and true variance, which is known because we derived this under the Neyman method. Okay, so it's a usual variance uh, expression, sigma one squared over n one plus sigma zero squared n zero. Okay, so we can look at this uh, difference between the uh, expectation of least squares variance estimate under homoscedal cysti and how they behave over repeated hypothetical randomized experiment and then compare that with the true variance. So if the variance estimator is unbiased, this difference should be zero. And you can simplify this formula and arrives this the following expression. Okay, now let's examine um, what this uh, result means. Okay, we can see immediately the bias is zero when the homoscedar statistic assumption holds. In other words, sigma one squared equals sigma zero squared. So the potential outcome has the same variance regardless of the treatment condition. In that situation, the bias is zero. This makes sense because the least squares variance estimator that we are examining here is derived under the homoscedasticity assumption. So indeed, if the potential outcomes, two potential outcomes have the same variance, then the least squares variance estimator is unbiased. Another interesting is when the design is biased, that is, the number of units who receives the treatment is the same as number of control units, n1 equal n0. When that happens, the bias is also uh, zero because the numerator of the, of the first term is going to be zero. Okay. So even if the homoscedasis assumption is violated, if the design is balanced, um, the bias is zero. When neither of these conditions falls, the bias can be either negative or positive, and that depends on the, the, the uh, difference between the variance under the two conditions and, and the sample size um, of the treatment or control group. So it could be the variance standard error you get from the least squares and the homoscedasticity assumption may be too big or too small. Um, we don't know that. Bias is typically small, especially N1 and N0 is close, right? The treatment, si treatment group size and control group size are close. Um, but this difference doesn't go away asymptotically. So the bias persists even if the sample size is large. Now we know in the linear regression context how we fix the heteroscedasticity problem. Typically, we use robust variance estimator uh, when we address this problem. Instead of the usual uh, variance estimator on the homoscedasticity we, have, we um, just discussed. So this estimator is often called sandwich estimator because of its home, form, sandwich robust estimator, where there are two e uh, equal terms, uh, the bread, x transpose x inverse, is sandwiching the middle term, which is the meat, okay? x transpose diagonal of uh, residual squared uh, times x. So here we use the matrix notation <coughs> where xi is, we have two um, intercept and then treatment variable. So xi is just a two by one uh, vector. And big X is basically a stacked matrix. So uh, X i is stacked, um, so it's n by two matrix. All observations X i for all observations are stacked into a ma one matrix. Okay, we can write this uh, using a summation and vector notation uh, as well, and which may give you a little bit uh, more intuitive uh, form. So it's basically each term is a sum of um, uh, uh, x uh, sum of sum across all units. Okay, so this is the uh, typical standard heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator. 
Now, um, it turns out that this EHW robust variance estimator is asymptotically unbiased, uh, even when um, the homoscopy assumption is violated. And you can write, in the case of when the treatment is binary, you can write the, uh, this robust variance uh, sandwich estimator in, uh, in the following way, where it's very similar representation to the standard Neyman's variance. The only difference is that denominator, like when you calculate the uh, sigma one squared, so I use sigma one squared tilde, because that's the difference from sigma one squared hat that we had, where we divide by nt, the size of the treatment or control group, um, instead of nt minus one, as we had it before. Okay. So that's the only difference. We basically look at the residual squared, yi minus y bar t. y bar t is the mean uh, of the outcome under the each treatment condition. So it's basically residual squared. So it's a sum of residual squared divided by nt instead of nt minus one. So as you expect, then the bias is very, very small um, because the only difference is whether you divide by nt or nt minus one. And the bias term is quite small, um, and it's always uh, negative. Okay, so that means that the by uh, the 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 robust sum errors tend to be slightly small, too small than the true variance. And um, but the denominator is n one squared and n zero squared, so this bias term uh, vanishes asymptotically. It goes to zero much, much quicker than the variance itself. Okay, so to summarize, the heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator is, uh, we learned that in the linear regression class as a way to deal with the homoscedasticity, the violation of homoscedasticity assumption, but that logic still works in the randomized um, experiment framework. This is uh, asymptotically equivalent to the true variance you derive under the uh, Neyman's um, formulation. We can improve this slightly by something called using HC2, heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator. If you recall from the linear regression class, there are slightly different types of uh, robust variance estimator in the linear regression, and one of them is called HC2. Okay. So this estimator, is very similar to the standard robust variance estimator that I showed you in the previous slide, except um, for the diagonal, uh, the residual square matrix, we divide by one minus PII. Okay. PII is something called the leverage, and it has the following form. To remind you, the leverage is basically, uh, if you think of the PX as a projection matrix, and the V of I is a vector uh, whose element is all zero except the i element. So you can think of this as indicator, vector, indicator vector, where i element is the only one that's one and everything else is zero, okay? So if we um, project that vector onto the space spanned by X, that's basically Px of Vi. It tells you how much x will explain that this particular observation i. And that projected vector, the length of that projected vector, is basically the leverage. Okay? So the more x explains this particular observation, the larger the leverage um, is. Okay. Turns out then that when the chip treatment is the only variable, and um, it's binary, then this leverage is very simple, and it makes sense. So if you're treated, it's one over n one. If you control, one over n zero. This makes sense because all the observations within the treatment group have the same leverage, because that's the only variable we have, and all the observations in the control group also should have the same leverage, um, because that T is the only variable we have. And the leverage um, is inversely proportional to the uh, group size. 
the larger the group size is, the smaller uh, the leverage. Okay. And so that's basically the H H A C H C two heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator. It's adjusted by the leverage. Um, and it turns out that this variance estimator is identical to the Neyman's variance estimator and is unbiased as a result. Okay, so it turns out that if you do HC2, it just gets this robust variance estimator, it's exactly the same as uh, Neyman's variance estimator. For this reason, uh, a lot of researchers use HC2 heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator as a way to estimate the causal effect using a linear regression, even when you have some other covariates as a part of the um, regression model. So to summarize, uh, simple re linear regression is, is, is identical to the difference in means estimator. It turns out that the coefficient for the treatment uh, variable is the same as different means estimator. It's important to understand that the homoscedasticity and the linear regression implies the equal variance of the potential outcomes. So the variance of y of 1 is equal to variance of y of 0, which holds if a constant additive treatment effect assumption uh, is actually applicable, but when there is a heterogeneity, it's likely to be violated. Heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator can uh, fix this problem. Um, by allowing the potential outcomes to have different uh, variance. And uh, HC2, um, heteroscedasticity robust variance estimator, is identical to Neyman's variance and is often used in applied research.